Hello, and welcome to the Carbon Capture Magazine podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Pikarski, and today we are joined by John Bissell, co-founder and co-CEO of Origin Materials. Welcome to the podcast, John. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for joining us. So we like to start these podcasts by learning a bit more about the guests. So can you share a bit about yourself and Origin Materials? Sure. Um, so I'm a chemical engineer by training. Uh, started uh, Origin, you know, pretty quickly after undergrad um, with my co-founder Ryan Smith, uh, who's also a chemical engineer. And um, what what Origin does is really convert plant matter, uh, or perhaps more technically, lignocellulosic material. <laughs> so anything that com- is is comprised of of cellulose um, into chemical building blocks that you can use to make all kinds of different materials. Um, so we start by using those building blocks to make polyester or PET. Uh, PET gets used in apparel. It gets used in all, all sorts of other textiles like carpets or um, uh, you know the upholstery inside of your car. Uh, and then of course it gets used for packaging, both for food and, and beverage packaging, which is where it tends to be a little bit more well-known. Although actually the, the, the fiber textile and apparel markets are quite a bit larger. Um, But we can go and make all sorts of other things too. And the key is that when we make those things using our uh, building block chemicals uh, and uh, that were made using our process, um, it's carbon negative. So, uh, you know, a tree consumes a bunch of carbon in order to grow. Um, Ordinarily, when that tree dies or when parts of it hit the ground, they're going to decompose and when they decompose, they turn back into CO2. So it returns the CO2 back to the atmosphere. Um, and it stores it just for the lifetime of the tree. Uh, what we do is when that tree gets harvested for structural lumber or something along those lines, um, you know, only a part of the tree gets used for the, the lumber. Um, and the rest of it, we use. Uh, so we can take that. And instead of that leftover material getting burned um, or... Uh, decomposing, as I described. Instead, it that carbon gets locked up in the materials that we make, um, which locks it up for a really long time. Uh, and so consequently, the materials that we make are carbon negative. Um, and as a result, we look to sort of um, change the way that materials are made writ large. Uh, stop making them from fossil materials uh, and start making them from um, from plant-based materials. Very interesting. So I understand that Origin has the carbon negative technology platform. Is this something that can be deployed at a commercial scale? And uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add about how it works? Sure. So, um, yeah, absolutely. It can be deployed at commercial scale. We're building our first plant right now, um, and it will it will be mechanically complete in a matter of weeks. So end of the year. And um, and then we'll be commissioning it in Q1, uh, expected to be done commissioning at the end of Q1. And then, you know, it starts up. So that's our first commercial plant. Um, it's not sort of a fully developed, scaled commercial plant in the sense that a lot of our plants will be, but it is absolutely commercial and will generate you know, quite real revenue. Um, and then we're building a, a, what we think of as a world-scale commercial plant um, down in Louisiana. Uh, And that'll be online in 25. And, um, you know, we see these plants as, um, as, you know, major players in the, uh, in the chemical markets. Now, any one individual plant, the chemicals markets are so large that any one individual plant isn't going to make a dent in anything, (laughs) but, um, but you can build a lot of them. You know, we we see each plant as being a million metric tons of feedstock processed into various materials, and that's pretty big. You know, that's not the size of a ref, of a refinery, but it's a um, it's the size of a really big chemical plant. Um, and so we see this technology as something that's economic, which provides the carbon benefits that the world needs, and which, uh, frankly, the technology is very flexible. You know, we can we don't just have to make PET; we can make all sorts of things. And so that gives it the flexibility to solve lots of different sort of um, carbon problems in a lot of different materials, uh, not just sort of narrowly focused on only PET. So we think that's really exciting. And we think that makes it a technology that has the 
the ability to really affect change. Um, in terms of the way that it works, it's a chemical process. So what we do is we take that plant matter that I described, which could be anything from, you know, you could think of sawdust or um, uh, wood chips or something like that. Um, you put that into the reactor. It's a liquid phase reactor. It chemically um, depolymerizes and reacts those uh, subsequent monomers uh, from the, the cellulose and the lignin into um, our intermediates, which we call furans. Uh, that's a broad class of chemicals. Um, and then those furans are what we can convert into materials. So uh, we can make it into paraxylene, which goes into PET, or we can make all kinds of other things. So that's the way the process works. Cool. So you said um, materials as well as packaging. What are some of Origin's current partners and customers, and how is the technology platform benefiting them? Yeah, so, you know, we we started our journey, well, maybe not started, uh, but a little ways back <laughs> in our journey, um, we were joined by uh, Nestle, Danone, and Pepsi. Um, and they were really well, sort of inaugural customers for us, um, who were also partners and helped us sort of um, develop our understanding of the markets, um, uh, really develop the technology, um, not from a technical perspective, but from a commercial perspective. Um, and so those are, you know, three notable ones. Of course, they were all focused on um, uh, beverage packaging uh, because that was the, the sort of business that was associated with it. But, you know, food packaging to a large extent as well. And, and so with customers like that, the value is, um, is that they can reduce their carbon footprint uh, by using our material without having to change the kind of material that they're using for their packaging. So, you know, if you, uh, if you want to switch from, you know, PET to some other kind of polymer as a, as a material for your package, you really have to do a lot of work to um, not only just develop the new package itself, but also, you know, change your supply chain, uh, maybe change the tooling on your equipment in order to, um, get that new material and that new package into your product. One of the benefits that we can bring is um, we we can give them PET. The PET that we make is exactly the same chemically as the stuff that they get from fossil materials. It just has a lower carbon footprint because of the way that it was made. And so consequently, they don't have to change their supply chain. Uh, they don't have to change the tooling on their equipment. They don't have to change their package designs, anything like that. Um, they can just drop this right in and get significant carbon reductions right away. And that's important in particular for PET. I mean, it's for, for all materials, but with PET, you know, sometimes we say if somebody buys any PET, they probably buy a lot of PET for their business. Uh, it's just sort of the nature of that material. Um, and so it's often a significant contributor to the carbon footprint of companies that use PET. It's it's a really key element. Uh, and that's that's for a lot of consumer products. Um, and so our customers get that benefit, you know, carbon footprint, that's really key. But there's actually another one, which is, um, you know, with our with our platform, our building blocks, we can make materials that actually kind of nobody else can make, um, or at least they can't make economically. So there's the whole palette of materials that you can make from fossil sources. Um, and then there's everything else, right? And, and there are a lot of materials that are very difficult to make from fossil sources. You have to go through sort of a, a lot of steps of chemistry in order to make, uh, turn a, a oil, crude oil into, into some of these other materials. And there's a whole palette of them that are really readily accessible from our platform. And so a lot of, some of those materials perform extraordinarily well. And so depending on the application, some of our customers, frankly, you know, yes, of course, they're interested in the carbon for, uh, footprint reduction, but more important is the performance that they get from the materials. They're just better materials. And so um, we're finding that that's actually a, a really significant draw for a lot of our customers as well. That's great. Yeah. I mean, everyone always says ch change is one of the scariest things. So having a solution where you don't need to change a whole lot is, is great. Um, how do you think that the strong push for carbon neutrality and net zero by companies all over the globe will affect the end markets for Origins technology platform. 
Oh, I think it's already had a significant effect. Um, you know, I, I'd say 10 years ago, the idea of um, carbon footprint reduction and let's call it more broadly sort of climate uh, um, adjustment, climate-based adjustment to your business was interesting. But I think, you know, companies weren't really willing to make any significant changes to their business in order to achieve any climate related goals. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, the stipulation was frequently, well, I want to change nothing and pay nothing more. And I don't really want to do any work. So as long as we can check all those boxes, then I'm interested in wherever the climate solution is. I think that is completely different now. Um, I think it's completely different for a couple of reasons. Um, one is, uh, of course, I think consumers have gotten a lot more serious about climate change. And that ends up being reflected through the commercial value chains. Um, so, I, And that's a huge driver. Uh, and so I think, you know, there's a lot of debate in the climate community around whether consumers should be changing their behavior or large companies should be forced to change theirs. I think it's a false dichotomy. I think that as consumers care more about this, that it becomes valuable for companies to offer products and solutions that consumers want to buy. Um, and those things might be more climate uh, sort of sensitive or focused. And, um, and as that happens, the companies that are offering climate-focused solutions end up being more successful. And so I, I think there's, a, uh, there's an interplay there, and we're starting to see that take, uh, take form, which is great. Um, I think another thing is, I think, and this is, a, this is sort of a, 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 a private, a pet theory, let's call it, um, but I, I think the world has changed its relationship with existential risk um, as a result of the pandemic. Um, and I think, frankly, that's being reinforced by the conflict in Eastern Europe. Um, and I think, you know, if in my experience, a lot of the people that I talk to, you know, go through some form of, of this thought process, which is, um, or it goes like this, boy, people for 50 years have been saying that there's going to be a pandemic that has um, a dramatic effect on a globalized world. Um, and it happened. And it did have a dramatic effect and it had a huge effect on my business um, and my particular part of the business. And so I think for an intelligent human, the next thing you say is, well, what else would have been pe have people been telling me is going to be an existential risk to either my business or to human society that I haven't been paying attention to? And I'll tell you, number one on that list is climate change. <laughs> and so I think because of that change in people's um, relationship with risk, uh, and, and by people, I mean both human society at large, um, but also the individuals that are making decisions at every level inside of organizations. Um, I think that uh, climate change is something that people are now taking action around rather than um, something sort of academic that you uh, sit around and wait for somebody else to solve for you. Right. I completely agree. Some great points in there, John. Uh, my last question for you was actually about the plant that Origin is constructing in Ontario. Um, do you have anything additional on that or just anything else that you would like to add? I, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, that, that plant, um, we call it Origin One, is, uh, it's going to be mechanically complete pretty soon here. Uh, you know, I, I don't know when this is going to release, but uh, but by the end of the year, end of 2022, we should be mechanically complete. And um, we will have, uh, you know, commissioning in Q1. And then it's start up as fast as we can after that and ramp capacity. You know, that, that, that plant is focused on providing, you know, I mentioned that there's PET, which we call sort of a drop-in product. You know, it's no different chemically than the materials from uh, from crude oil and fossil sources, but it's made in a different way and therefore it's a lower carbon footprint. So that, that's one class. Those are the drop-in materials. And then there is the other class of materials where you really can't get these materials except through our platform. Um, and some of them perform in very interesting ways. 
Origin One is focused on the latter category. So it's Origin One is focused on materials that you really can't make very well from fossil sources, and um, and yet which have properties that are very interesting. And so we want Origin One to be focused on those materials because um, we can make hundreds and thousands of tons of those materials, get them into the hands of our customers, who can then start to learn at a commercial scale, small commercial, but still commercial scale about those materials uh, and start to sort of figure out how do I incorporate these into my business and my supply chains? What are the things that I need to adjust? Um, and that gives customers the confidence to buy those new materials that perform better, that can, you can only really make from our platform, to buy those materials at much larger scales that are closer to our world scale plant, right? So. We see Origin One as a key stepping stone into those advanced materials being deployed at sort of a, a world scale that is relevant, not just to climate change and humanity, but actually, frankly, to some of the other problems um, that that humanity has with materials as well, which we could probably spend a whole other podcast talking about. So I won't dig in, but. Uh, but everything from you know human health to um, to uh, end of life of of materials uh, are things that we're trying to address with those advanced materials. So origin one key stepping stone into getting those new materials into the market. Awesome. Well, we might have to do another podcast where we check back in once it's up and running. Sure. Would be happy to. <laughs> All right. Again, I am joined by John Bissell, founder and CEO of Origin Materials. Thank you so much for the conversation, John. It was very interesting to speak with you. Thanks, Danielle. And as always, thank you to our listeners. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you or your company is interested in a podcast, please reach out to Carbon Capture Magazine. Until next time.